Welcome to the SARS Tax Practitioner Readiness Program. This is part two of module seven, and this deals with the employer tax season made easy. At the end of this module, you are expected to understand the following. How to submit an EMP501 via e-filing, using the correct source codes, how to utilize ETI, which is your employment tax incentive, and also setting up EasyFile. So the following video will demonstrate to you exactly how to submit an EMP501 using e-filing. Please be advised that these videos are subject to change. So you might find that you log on to e-filing and the screens might look a bit different. However, the principle remains exactly the same. Welcome to this tutorial on how to complete and submit the Employer Reconciliation EMP501 on SARS e-filing. If you aren't already an e-filer, go to www.sars.gov.za, click register and follow the process. For further assistance with e-filing registration, refer to the How to Register for e-filing and Manage Your User Profile Guide available on the SARS website. Once registered, Log into e-filing using your username and password. You will land on the dashboard. If the applicable organization portfolio is not set as default, you will need to open it. Click My Profile on the left and then on Portfolio Management. Click Go to Portfolio once you have selected the applicable portfolio. You can use the search function to look for a specific taxpayer using one of the following. Company name registration number, tax reference number. Once you have found that taxpayer, click View Taxpayer. Please note that submissions of the employee tax certificates are for the Interim Reconciliation, i.e. period 08, March to August, and the Annual Reconciliation, i.e. period 02, March to February. To access your returns, click Returns on the top menu then Returns issued on the left side menu. Next, click on Employees Tax, EMP501. This will take you to the Returns search page. Select the applicable period and click Request Return. This will immediately display a return for the period requested on the Return Search screen. Click the Open link. Note, if you have selected a final reconciliation before the end of the filing period, this is an exception process and should not be used other than liquidation, winding up the company, insolvency, estate cases, dormant. The following screen will display and you will be required to confirm that you wish to continue and provide a reason why you're submitting the reconciliation before the end of the filing period. This will issue the return on the EMP501 work page. To open the return, click on the EMP501 link. You will now be able to complete the tax certificates once the EMP501 is opened. Before completing the EMP501 for interim and annual submissions, the IRP5 IT3A certificates must be completed first. The IRP5 IT3A certificates should reflect the income, deductions and tax as calculated at this point. You must provide copies of the final IRP5 IT3A certificates to employees after submitting the annual reconciliation for period 02. Please retain copies for your own records as well. To add an IRP5 IT3A certificate, click on the My Tax Certificates tab and then click Add. It is important to note that on e-filing, employers can only file a reconciliation that contains a maximum of 50 IRP5 IT3A certificates, tax certificates. Complete all the mandatory fields. Note, the certificate number is a unique 30-digit number allocated to each specific IRP5 IT3A certificate issued by the employer. The certificate number comprises the following. The first 10 digits equals PAYE reference number, or alternatively, the income tax reference number, if only non-taxable employees are employed and the employer is not registered for PAYE. The next four digits equal transaction year. The next two digits equals last two digits of period of reconciliation, 08 or 02. The next 14 digits 
can contain any unique combination of alpha and numeric characters. Now complete the applicable details for the employee, starting with the employee information. The employee address details, consisting of the residential address and the postal address, and then the bank account details. Ensure that you complete all mandatory fields. The PAYE reference number, SDL reference number, UIF reference number, and trading or other name will be pre-populated. Complete the employee physical work address. This is the employee's place of work. Complete the tax certificate information, starting with capturing the pay periods information. ETI employment date is the initial date of employment or the date employed by an associate employer as defined by the ETI Act. Certificate tax period start date refers to the first date of the employee's tax period in the relevant year of assessment. Certificate tax period end date refers to the last date of the employee's tax period in the relevant year of assessment. Periods in year of assessment. The periods are determined according to the pay intervals at which the employer pays employees. Number of periods worked refers to the number of pay periods for which the employee worked during the relevant tax year. Voluntary over deduction. This field indicates if the employee requested over deduction of PAYE. Fixed rate taxation indicator. This field indicates if the employee's tax was calculated at a fixed rate because of non-standard employment. Note, if the employee's tax calculation is changed from a fixed rate to the tables and vice versa, a separate certificate must be submitted. Complete the directive numbers issued by SARS. Directive numbers must correspond to the directives issued and 9999999 and 000000 numbers are not allowed. Note, ensure that the directive number, the source code and the amount relating to the directive captured on the certificate are the same as on the directive. Should the information be incorrect, the individual or employee will not be able to submit their income tax return, ITR 12. When completing the financial information section, income received, insert the amounts, RANDs only, and sources codes applicable to all remuneration paid or payable by the employer to the employee. Non-taxable income, 3696. This field will be auto-calculated on the form and is the sum of all the non-taxable income source code amounts. Gross employment income, taxable, 3699. This field will be auto-calculated and is the sum of all the income source code amounts not included in 3696 above and is only applicable from the 2017 year of assessment. Note, for years of assessment prior to 2017, the following fields will need to be completed. Gross retirement funding income, 3697, is the sum of all the income retirement funding income amounts. Gross non-retirement funding income, 3698, the sum of all the non-retirement funding income amounts. The gross employment income taxable 3699 field will be auto-calculated and is the sum of all the income source code amounts not included in 3696 above. Insert the amounts, RANDs only, and the sources codes applicable to all amounts deducted, including employer information codes. For example, code starting with 44. Note that you must use RAND and sense when completing the fields under this section. Complete all the mandatory fields. For more information on the source codes and descriptions, refer to the latest Business Requirement Specifications for PAYE Employer Reconciliation available on the SARS website. You can now complete the declaration by clicking on the My Reconciliation Declaration tab. The EMP501 form is pre-populated with the applicable reference numbers for PAYE, SDL and or URF and the trading name. Complete all mandatory information starting with the Diplomatic Indemnity Indicator field that is optional for years prior to 2020 and mandatory from 2020 going forward. If applicable, declare the amounts for the Employment Tax Incentive ETI. Note, if you declare the ETI on the EMP201, the ETI amount will be pre-populated. If no ETI is pre-populated, ETI was either not declared 
or were subsequently reversed via either the EMP201 or EMP501 process. ETI cannot be added or increased on the EMP501. For further information on the Employment Tax Incentive ETI, refer to the Guide for Employers in Respect of Employment Tax Incentive available on the SARS website. Declare the amounts on the financial particulars. Due to COVID-19 tax relief, the SDL liability field will be defaulted to zero and locked for the months of May, June, July and August 2020 to make provision for the SDL payment holiday. This will be a once-off incentive and will not continue in the future. Once you have completed both the EMP501 declaration and all the IRP5 IT3A certificates, you may use the save option to save your return if you wish to edit or submit it later. Alternatively, you may submit your return by clicking Submit Form. Note, if a mandatory field was not completed, you will get a pop-up message notifying you to complete the field. Complete the mandatory fields and click Submit Form. Carefully read the declaration and then click Agree. Your return will be submitted. Now click Continue. This will take you to the EMP501 work page. The status of your return will now be displayed as filed through e-filing. Congratulations! You have successfully completed and submitted your EMP501 declaration on SARS e-filing. Yes, so it is important to note that if you have more than 50 employees, you can't submit them via uh, e-filing. So that means if you have more than 50 employees, you have to do it via easy file. So easy file you can download from the SARS website. You just need to make sure that the compatibility is correct. So you would go onto the SARS website. You'd see there is an easy file logo. You click on it, you download it. It's going to ask you for the compatibility, if it's for Windows or it's for Mac. You choose whichever one is applicable to you. So once you've downloaded it and saved it onto your desktop, and you've run it, um, it's then going to ask you to do a quick registration. The registration is very simple and forward. Um, oh, sorry, straightforward. So you would then select admin as being the main um, admin username. So it will always be admin in capital letters. You will then select a password, and then you will give us a hint as to what your password is. So what that basically means is that in the event that you forget your password, you click on password hint, and the hint should then tell you what your password is. So your password should be easy enough for you to remember, but also difficult enough for someone to try and crack it. So please make sure that you use at least one capital letter, one small letter, a number, and a special character. So what is a special character? A special character is an exclamation mark or a dollar sign um, or a hashtag. Those are your special characters. So an example of a password would be, let's say you use your name. Your name is Roy. You make it Roy. First letter capital. Everything else small letters. Roy 100%. So you've met all the requirements. Uh, the mistake that people normally make is that they put a first letter capital, second letter lowercase, then the third letter capital, then somewhere in between they do a special character as well. And by the time they hit enter, they've forgotten what the password is already. So like I said, try to make it as easy as possible for yourself to remember, but also as difficult as possible for the next person to remember. So once you've done that and you log on to EasyFile, you now need to import your payroll. OK, so basically you're going to import your payroll. From your payroll system, so whichever payroll system you're using. So you import it, it's then going to tell you if you've passed your validations. So the validations means that the person that you or the employees that's on there has tax numbers. You're not just using zeros. Uh, the demographic details has been completed um, or the mandatory fields has been completed. If it is not been completed, it will tell you that it has failed the validation. Then it will also tell you what went wrong in the validation. So it's important to go to the log and just to check what the actual reasons were. 
please, it is extremely important that you read every pop-up message that comes up on your screen. Do not just click OK. Because those pop-ups are there for a very good reason. So please read your pop-ups. Once you've done that and you have successfully imported it, it will tell you that you have now passed all the validations and it can now be submitted to SARS.